Hi, I'm Dr. Sunil Richardson, Clefton Craniofacial Surgeon practicing out of South India and also the Middle East. In this short video, we're going to tell you the answers for the 10 commonly asked questions to us on cleft lip. So can you shoot the number one question across, please? When is the best time to fix the cleft lip? The best time to fix a cleft lip is when the child is about 5 kilos of weight. I repeat, 5 kg weight. It's not 6 months, it's not 3 months. It's about 5 kilos weight. What's number 2? Is there any best technique? Well, really no. There are multiple ways to skin a cat and very true with cleft lip repair as well. Just like how a painter can use the same paint and two different painters can get different results with the same paint but different techniques, so is cleft lip repair. There are many techniques people do world over and different techniques can bring out excellent results. The important aspect is not the technique but the surgeon and the team involved. What's number three? Will the nose be corrected in the lip surgery? Absolutely. So we tend to take care of the baby's nose as well as much as possible during the lip surgery. This is our protocol here at Richardson's and we do a closed rhinoplasty which means there's going to be no scar on the baby's nose whatsoever. We want to make sure the nose grows normally but we also want to make sure the nose is as symmetrical and as balanced on the face as possible. What's number four? Is it the risky surgery? Well, I wouldn't say it's a risky surgery but cleft lip surgery is a major surgery. So you definitely must have an experienced pediatric surgeon, experienced and expert cleft and craniofacial surgeon, pediatricians and the whole team. A craniofacial team is a must if your baby has to get excellent results. We at Richardson's have an expert, experienced, long-term craniofacial team and we have treated over 10,000 patients in the last almost two decades. What's number five? Will the baby have pain? No, the baby will not have pain for two reasons. The surgery is done under general anesthesia so the baby sleeps. And when we finish, I give the babies a block. A block is something that stops the nerve from sending impulses. So we give a block here and we give a block inside. So making sure that the baby is relaxed. So therefore, please do not worry about your baby's pain. The baby actually doesn't have pain. What's next? Are there surgeons specialized for this surgery? Absolutely. There are surgeons who are really specialized for this and they are usually craniofacial surgeons. They could either come from maxillofacial or ENT or most often plastic surgery background. But whatever the background, the important aspect is the experience that they have. You got to look at the earlier cases, see the results and then you can very easily decide if your baby, or if your kid, or if your relative needs to get operated here. What's next? Is there any scope for revision after surgery? We keep doing this all the time. A lot of revisions. Revision surgeries, especially for cleft kids and cleft adults, is very, very common, mainly because it's not being done by real expert surgeons. It's a not a very complicated surgery, actually, but to get the fine points, to get that finesse, you really have to have that skill set. And I have to say, it's like a painter, it's like a sculptor. You got to get the points together which nature has left for you. But to get those points in the right place is absolutely essential. So the first time is the best time. When you have virgin tissues, the results can be next to normal. I mean, next to how the baby would have been if the baby didn't have a cleft. I keep telling this to my patients who overcome and see me. I tell them that it's like a butterfly coming out of the cocoon. So when the wings span out the first time, they have this opportunity to become nice and strong. Same way, the first time is the best time for all cleft kids. What's next? Will the child be able to feed properly after surgery? Yes, a big concern for a lot of my mothers. They are always wondering will the child be able to feed immediately after surgery. And for them, it's good news that we let the child even breastfeed after 2-3 hours after surgery. We do not keep them fasting for too long. Our fasting time is usually 4-5 to five hours. We start the morning fasting, do the surgery in the afternoon and by late evening, 
they're feeding again. So don't worry about their fasting status. What's the recovery period? Recovery period. Very good question. Again, the recovery can be into two. The first is the immediate recovery, which I think takes just two days for cleft lips. So I tend to use cyanoacrylate glue, vicryl rapid. These are sutures that dissolve and glue that sticks. And these need to be removed to be on the safer side on day five or day six. So that means the first recovery is the immediate recovery. That's about 24 hours to maximum 48 hours. And then the second phase is when you take off these sutures or wash the glue off or remove the vicryl rapid. That can take up to six days. After which, remember it only takes seven days maximum for skin to heal so really uh, that's the that's the healing first up then it takes a little bit longer for the muscle inside to heal but then that heals and no one knows after that period the child is then asked to put on the child is put on creams uh, to reduce the scarring or the impact from surgery okay do we have another question now whether the face become normal like any other person well our main motto, our main goal at Richardson's is to make sure each and every cleft child with this deformity is made like a child without a cleft deformity. I don't like to use the word normal or abnormal because I think every cleft child is a special child and they're normal in every way. It's just that we don't like to see them like that and so we want to get the surgery done on them but literally they're normal. But what we like to say again is our team here at Richardson's, our goal is to make each and every child who has this issue be like another child who doesn't have the issue. And I tend to call this as cleft conversion. And we've been doing this for many years. And if you have any queries, if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to shoot them. You can either WhatsApp us and or messages just down on our YouTube channel and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you. Should we worry about the blood loss? Not really. To be very honest, we lose about 10 to 12 or 15 ml of blood for these surgeries. So that's like negligible even for a baby. With good anesthesia, with good surgical skill and practice, I think blood loss can be really, really minimized to such a low extent that we haven't done a transfusion for any cleft kid in the last so many years. So this is the take home message, blood loss. A lot of Indian parents are worried about blood loss and I don't think they have to be worried at all. If they go to the right surgeon, the right surgeon, uh, right center, then that really is not going to be a concern, not going to be a problem. So I'm sure there are many more questions and if you have, you can shoot them out. we will be more than happy to answer. We've just given you like the top 10 billboard countdown questions on cleft cleft and I hope it was useful. Thank you.